How's it going guys, JCBP11 here from Dubai and the Galaxy S7 and the LG G5 both got announced at MWC just a few days ago. And if you clicked on this video to find out which phone would suit you the best, you're at the right place. So without wasting any time, let's get into my first impressions of both these devices. The LG G5 looks much more of an upgrade over the LG G4. It sports a 5.3 inch QHD display and an all metal unibody design. Inside the frame we have the Snapdragon 820 chipset along with 4GB of RAM and the Adreno 530 GPU to power pretty much anything you throw at it. Of course, running Android Marshmallow. The only slight issue with LG this time around is the fact that LG's UI has neglected the app drawer on an Android phone. The 16 megapixel camera is also an improvement over the LG G4, not only featuring the manual modes from the LG V10's camera unit, but also featuring a much wider field of view, as well as better quality pictures, even though LG didn't talk about how they're gonna make the pictures better. But nonetheless, we could expect a better camera, and underneath the camera unit, we also find a new addition to the LG lineup, which is a fingerprint scanner. But arguably the most innovative feature from the G5 has to be its modular design. If you pull down the chin of the LG G5, you can not only replace the 2800 mAh battery, but also add in additional modules, or as they like to call it, friends. These modules include the LG Cam Plus, which is something that you can attach to the LG G5's magic slot, which allows you to control the camera of the LG G5 through hardware, as well as the LG Hi-Fi Plus, which is an external speaker. Interestingly, both of these modules act as external batteries that power the phone as well, but I hope they don't charge you ridiculous amounts for them. On the other hand, Samsung approached the Galaxy S7 as to fine-tune it. Most of the design philosophy remains identical to the Galaxy S6, and the internals, which include the processor, the RAM, and the GPU remains identical to the LG G5. However, Samsung did reintroduce both microSD support as well as IP certification. If you don't know what IP certification is, the Galaxy S7 is IP68 certified, which makes it relatively dust and waterproof. And if you don't believe me, you can check the link in the description where T-Mobile exclusively unboxes the Galaxy S7 and the S7 Edge underwater. While the S7 also features an always-on display like the G5, the camera and the battery is where it differentiates itself. The 12 megapixel unit on the S7 may seem like a downgrade from the S6, but the large f1.7 aperture, the larger pixel size, and the larger sensor makes photography under low light an absolute pleasure. And that too combined with that amazingly fast autofocus will make for a great S7 camera. And the funky lens covers for the S7 may also be really fun to play around with. Battery size is also a tad bit bigger on the Galaxy S7, featuring a 3000 mAh battery, but of course this battery isn't removable like the LG G5's. Nevertheless, battery overheating should be significantly reduced on the S7, especially because Samsung have implemented a new water cooling system which I did make a video about here. This year seems to be very neck and neck for both LG and Samsung, especially because both of these phones feature the same hardware. How unique one phone is over the other might help you make a decision on which phone to buy. Are you the type of person who would deck out on those LG G5 modules, or do you look for convenience on a phone from what the Galaxy S7 offers? in IP68 certification. Both phones are due to launch sometime in March and let me know in the comments which phone you're likely to pick up. One thing's for sure, HTC do have a very very long way to go. If you found this video useful, a like rating would be appreciated. But as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. But until then, adios.